Yeah, it's a bit odd. Yeah. We'll take a look at our community vote just to see what you guys think about this. And I wouldn't be surprised. 81% for GT. We're looking down because our monitor in front of us isn't like super working. 50% for Penta and a 4% draw potential. Yeah. There's always, uh, there's always the people that like vote for the draw in the middle. And I want to say, yeah, it's it's pretty difficult there. But yeah. we are ready to go for Oregon. Remember G2 versus Penta Sports. And both teams are not on top, which is a bit odd saying that about a team like G2. Yeah. They are currently at position five with only three points. They'll play the third game today. And Penta are still with a lonely zero. I gotta say, even if Penta and G2 just tie this, that's not really great for G2, nope. given how they are not dominating the leaderboard right now. All right, well, let's see how this one plays out as it's always, even though the repetition, even though we saw three coastlines before, Hello. There we go. The plane goes back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, of course, we do cast from Oregon, if people are asking. It's yeah. very close to California, right? It's like Washington State right above. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Geography. There's no surprise there. This seeming... Yeah. The band's against uh, Pengu, essentially. <laughs> now, last time, there was no ban against uh, yeah. uh, on Monty. Yeah. You ban the Ying. Everybody mentions Hungary, but I want to say Sir Boss, in my opinion, is an even better player than Hungary because people kind of got used to how Hungary plays the Ying, whereas Sir Boss's style is a bit different and the aggression is dealt in a different way. And I think um, it's it's much more well-timed compared to how Hungary does it. Maestro is going to be banned and Mira will be as well. Overall, the bans make a ton of sense, though this leaves Maverick on the board. Uh, Thatcher that we saw banned in our first matchup for between Ents and Chaos is going to be in play, so Mute is not going to be as disruptive as we think. We'll see if Thatcher is even picked at all. G2 starting off on their attacking side, and Pengu straight up for the Blitz. I'm, I'm thinking that's just to taunt them at this point, but you never know. I mean, it absolutely could happen. No, he might six pick over to the to the Thatcher. Now, this if might want to take that. It might force Penta to just go for Legion, right, for six pick. I don't know if either one of them will even change it. No, they're no, it's going to go the, the other anti gadget operator. And there's the mute. That's not surprising. I, I had a feeling someone was going to six pick over to that, but it does surprise me he didn't go for the Thatcher instead. But they've got the Maverick, and we saw the strategy with that earlier. But they also have the uh, Twitch drones who could potentially Attack get the right angle, and make it work. Bomb. On top of that, um, picking the bandit first can kind of put your opponents off guard. They don't know which set you're going for. They don't see that whole laundry down below. Yeah, the reveal face does not reveal the bomb site for anyone yes. who's not aware. It only reveals the operators. It also does not reveal who's playing those operators, mm -hmm. which is a, a slight bit of extra strategy you can get in terms of faking things out. Not surprising, though, to see Kanto on the uh, Twitch for the FAMAS, as we've seen Canadian, uh, for example, in North America, playing quite a bit of the operator. She can do a lot of damage. The F2 is still a huge reason of why you would pick the Twitch. And you know what? That's okay. That doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. Her utility is nice. Her gadget is nice. But it puts you in a bit of a difficult situation where it might not always work out or you lose the, those Twitch drones early on. At least you still have the FAMAS. And that's how you balance the operator around having a bit of a mediocre um, ability, but a very good gun to compensate. Well, the nice thing is combined with IQ means you can spot the gadgets, then call out for those drones to hit them rather than the drone having to go exploring on its own, which uh, might be part of the strategy for dealing with Mute Jammers, potentially. They do have a Thermite instead of a Habana, though, which is something Go got very well known for playing is that Thermite. Oh, yeah. CCC, I planned. Yeah. Well, they've got the wall open to make sure that uh, you can't really skip around the Mute Jammer by hitting it on the wall. So that is definitely not going to be an option for them. But Fabian, of course, being that Maverick, can potentially open up and take advantage of the wall being kind of opened up. Actually, you get a slightly different angle. And we're going to see a pressure here onto the, uh, the meeting hall pretty quickly. Is it a place you don't see thermite charges used too often, but certainly a viable strategy. And also a place where the walls are usually left soft, at least half of it left soft. Um, but the reinforcement was also put on the the wall from the from the uh, uh, main lobby into the meeting hall, which means that the Maverick can just chip at it and maybe find an angle on enemy in the back. Kanto Ricchetti will go in with that witch drone as enemy is going to... Oh, She's going to be forced out of position. It it makes a lot of sense. Fabian, in the meantime, will just open up a bit of the hatch here Ooh. in the main lobby to maybe get some picks on any players below, but mainly to destroy any new jammers. 
And I like the strategy of opening up and putting pressure on the meeting hall to make it safer for Maverick to be able to try and do his job because they can't just run out the beating hall door on him, and they even forced enemy all the way back to site. So while there's no kills going out so far and time has been burned, it does seem G2 are at least doing their job to an extent, and they also spot the Echo Drone, which is necessary to make sure this plant will go down. And the only smokes that they're going to have for that plant, of course, are going to be coming from Eunice. You see the bulletproof camera that was set in. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, was that brought by the mute? Can we take a look at Sir Boss for just a second? He did bring, yep. bring it. So there you go. You don't have a C4 to play with here, which leaves Penta with only one C4 in the hands of Revan. And that's what is forced by banning the Mira. What's the biggest downside here of not having a, a Mira is, or, or having a Mira is that smokes are very easy to use to deal with uh, her windows. Oh. C4 will get tapped right on top of Goga here as uh, CCC I die is the one they'll say. Fabian though will find one on Sir Boss limiting the shotgun, but they didn't have to worry about, oh, uh, no, Revan will get one on Fabian again. So that's a great refrag here. Blast is fairly low on HP, unfortunately for the Echo, but he's still alive. And all three gas canisters have been expended. Panko can just go in for the plant. The question is, will he get away with it? It's going to depend on pressure from the other attackers upstairs. Information has been gathered, though. Cantor Ketty will find one, and Revan, beautiful play, as that might just been all that they require. Junus will get two, but Refuser is still being camped, and the defense will take the round. Wonderfully played there. Revan peeks in and finds the one kill they needed. Impact Frax. Nicely done. I almost feel like if Goga had just stuck that first plant, they might have actually been able to make it work. Hit him jumping off the uh, washing machine pretty much jumped right into the C4. That being said, it's hard to say the C4 splash damage, depending on exactly where it hits, is, is going to vary a little bit. And if that had done a significant amount of damage to him combined with the smoke, might have been lethal either way, but still a good attempt. Now, of course, they know they don't have to fight laundry again because... Well, they just the defense just won laundry, so they know it's very, very likely to be dorms, so they can prepare accordingly for their operators. Assuming they didn't already know laundry was going to be the first one as well. It's always that if they had won laundry on the attack, then they would have been like, are they going to do laundry again? Are they going to do dorms? You never know. But if you have a consistent lineup that you know works, you're going to just go with that time and time again anyways. We'll see how they get away with it this time or not. Somewhat similar lineup here coming out. Like I say, we, we do compliment Hungry often on his uh, smoke play, and I think that was a good example of that in that round. Yes, he did burn all three smoke canisters, but he did burn down the time enough to where they were under so much pressure, plus some of those early kills, like getting the, the Fabian killed as well as uh, Goga dying, left them in kind of a tough spot to get the plant, and Pengu did take a bit of damage as well from the smoke, so it definitely was at least good, and first off, delaying uh, Goga from getting the plant, and then continuing to make it hard for Pengu, so. Yeah, I don't think enough people talk about Attackers how uh, great of a Attackers smoke hungry is. Um, he's, he's been doing this for the past year or so, and no stoppage anytime soon. Very much a, a smoke that you have to watch out for uh, if you're on the G2 side here. And the attack, though, G2 will start off by entering into the tower. They already have droned it, so they know that there's nobody in there. They have, however, they will need to worry about the uh, the bandit wall here to the attic. Yeah, also in the meantime, G2, well, Pengu himself, will just continue to burn the tower. It's interesting how they don't seem to really want to bring that Thatcher. Mm. I mean, they have the option to. It's not banned. It would help them in some of these situations. It would stop some of the delaying. But I think often they go, you know what? We're just going to get map control around the uh, shock-wired reinforcements or mute jammed reinforcements, whichever it is, and then we'll deal with it later. Yeah, especially, you know, bringing the IQ is kind of another way of dealing with this sort of utility. Obviously, just throwing an EMP and destroying it then and there is the easiest way of doing it, especially when enemy, enemy is so far away from um, that position. But G2 are limited to and one more exothermic charge left, so you're going to have to be careful of how they use that charge Especially the fact that, sure, Fabian is playing the Maverick, which is a hard breacher, but that hard breacher does things in a more technical way instead of just literally blowing up a hole. So G2 might consider a quick rush into the bunks, which is something that we saw both Empire, uh, both Ents and uh, their opponents Chaos doing. Kanto Rikete will find one on Blast, and that's the Echo. That might just be the, the moment that they require here, G2, to move on in, but Hungry is going to try and hold the flank. Nice. Good use of his smoke to be able to cover himself. You see another one that he just had pre-planted going off as well, but that's two down. 
Only one left and a whole minute left. He's going to have to hold with more than just the smokes. Put finding exactly more than just the smokes. Nice job. And he's hoping to kind of clip that through a wall a little bit there to do a damage to a repeller if he can, as well as cover his movement. So he's doing a pretty good job with this, Reloading. but they're just going to continue to join him out. And they have the Capital still alive. Somehow he gets away and escapes, though. Enemy still looking for a potential kill heal here from the tower window. Sir Boss will be the one to find it. Even though G2 cleared out the tower early on, Sir Boss is ready to retake it. And enemies downstairs to help out as well. Yunus has dropped Kanto Raketi. Well, technically the last man alive. This enemy will find the last two with the bandit coming in from the white stairs below. Beautiful play from Penta to shut down G2. It's just, hey, you think you have map control? Yeah. <laughs> think again. I got a question. This lineup they're bringing doesn't seem to be bringing the utility that they need. I mean, Thatcher aside, it's just it's not bringing much that's doing much for them. And we're seeing, you know, some interesting plays with the Thermite in terms of the way that Gogo's playing it. But Pengu's IQ is not really doing a ton either. He's not really getting a lot of kills. Uh, I mean, he can be spotting things like the the Echo Drone and uh, the Yokai and things like that. But it's, I don't know, I, I just, I question the impact of some of these operators outside of, uh, you know, the Hard Breachers in Capitao. I mean, obviously Kanto's going to be doing good with his uh, gun either way. But, I don't know, it's, it's not working out. If they can't win Tower, I'm starting to really be concerned here about uh, G2's attacks. However, that being said, as I've said many times before, it is not unusual to see some of the top teams lose some of the initial rounds as they kind of calibrate to their opponent. Revan, though, you can see doing a great job with three kills and then everyone else kind of bringing it up. Blast, not so much, but you know what? They're winning the rounds. He doesn't necessarily need to. They're doing a good job of that. Now, for a tower play, of course, it does make sense to be bringing the Valkyrie, and that will be something they will have to worry about. This is this is one of those times where Pengu's IQ will definitely be very Camera important in making sure that even if the cameras are inside, that they know that, that they know where exactly they have to deal with those because repelling is so unsafe outside if Five cameras are left in sort. And you see, they're starting to open things up, getting ready for those camera placements. Now, one more is going to be thrown Attackers on top. To and, mm, I don't know if that was exactly a position Ravon was going for, but still, hard to say. You still get a decent chunk of information. Of course, that, uh, that black eye is set in that position just so you can see any players that are rappelling up onto the tower. It's a logical maneuver. It makes a lot of sense. And I recommend you, you know, do it yourself at home. Another thing that you might be able to do. <laughs> Risk free. She's going to write a book like, it's like one of those dangerous things for boys Four books minutes. or whatever. Gonna... Dangerous things for Rainbow Six Siege players. things to do at home <laughs> on a rainy day. Well, they are going to be forced to actually rotate down to the basement here, which Fabian's going to potentially catch out. Kanto seemingly being able to sneak his drone past the mute jammers. Not too big deal, and of course it is more difficult to do sometimes because you cannot jump the drone, meaning there are positions that the jammer is a little bit more effective on, but it seems like he's just kind of droning to get an idea if it's safe to go in. does do that, now he's going to start putting pressure on. This is important though, having control of the dorms, very useful for the crossfire onto the tower, and you definitely do not want to get shot from it. Now you still need to make sure you control kitchen here, which they are doing, and cut off the west side so they cannot just do runouts on the door as well. So it's all about controlling their ability to stop your repels. Standing. Stay All right, Pengu will continue to scan in as the IQ searches for more utility. And there you go. An extra one destroyed. I'm not sure if that was a goo mine or a new jammer. Regardless, yeah. still something. It's, it's, it's dead now, whatever it is. So good job on Pengu. Hopefully he's going to be able to spot the, uh, the camera that was set on the other side as well. He may have already done so. It's hard to be sure. But this is always a spot that is, uh, that is one of the things that makes the tower so difficult. So <laughs> coming out from Fabian as he starts to... Uh, open things up with that Maverick. Yeah, that's a good description there. But uh, yeah, he's taken quite a bit of time to go through it as I'm not sure where Goga is in the meantime. Uh, he's downstairs. So he's going to try to open up the wall to enter through the through the side, possibly, and just go for a plant close up to, um, because you see there's the cubby on the on the ground floor, and you can plant in that in that as thermite, which is a position that's usually reinforced. Ooh. Sir Boss, though, will connect with the C4. It's thrown in from below through one of the hatches. You lose the Goga. Now, unfortunately, with 40 seconds left, you might not have enough time to recover after it. Still, a lot of utility left for Jonas on the Capitao, and Fabian will find the kill on Revon. That's the second set of C4 that G2 had to worry about. Fabian will take quite a bit of damage, though, through the hole. Jonas trying to shut down his opponents before 
They cross on in and clear them out. Pengu in the meantime, holding off the cross rotation. Fabian with another one here on the Maverick. Serbots will get taken down. Jonas will go for the plant as the wall next to him is actually soft, so I'll have to correct myself on that. Blast will push in. He'll find one kill. He'll find two. Can he get the clear now? Fabian is still right behind, and Kanto Kenny will rush up. He'll find one. Little time left as Hungry will try to go for the duel, but two kills have come in. Blast is still alive, and he'll delay it enough. The defenders of Penta will take the tower. They'll slay the Spire, as they say, and that's all that was needed. Again, so many rounds today. Devin, are just one alpha of timing. Yeah, and that's the struggle that attack is at at the moment, and that is part of the reason we're seeing defense, you know, so dominant. I really like the way Fabian is using Maverick's ability successfully to an extent, especially that round, because you're seeing him poke open holes, not just, uh, oh, I'm using it to get a hatch, right? The Latin America is using it absolutely for hatches, whereas I feel like he's looking for lots of ability to get advantage angles or to clear out positions. You saw him use it in the attic very effectively, led to some kills there as well. It's, it's, it's working out for him. He's doing a good job with it, and I feel like he's able to succeed with the utility he's bringing. Mm -hmm. Pengu, I feel, is really struggling yeah, to, to get the plays the working. Eunice, a little bit okay can. as well. It's, I don't know, the, the strategies that they're employing are not giving them the map control ever to be able to secure a plant. They're always getting just enough map control to start to push towards a plant, but time starts playing against them, not able to make that work, and they've lost all three bombsite attacks now. So guess what? That gets to go through the rotation again by Penta. If they continue to win those, of course, that would be uh, amazing to see a 6-0 going in the second half. Oh, yes. That but, would... Uh, oof. Yikes. I mean, they that's are mortal. Unlikely, but They're yeah. mortal. They certainly are. We have seen them bleed. Immortals play in Latin America. Yeah. Five seconds of insertion. Got him. Baited into that one. <laughs> I've been planning this one for the past Attackers four weeks. The I spent my Attackers whole birthday just like, all right, what can I use as dad jokes for uh, yeah. Pro League? Which one will make Emzo proud of me? Oh. Well, none of them. I'll start ordering the trophy. World's number one word. dad. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see if their attack's going to work this time. Again, no Thatcher, still the mute coming out. This time, they're going to have the uh, pulse as well to be able to predict when the attack might be coming down the stairs. Again, this is going to be dependent on Fabian to do his job. Last time they opened up the meeting hall wall, gave some pressure on their forced enemy out, as well as uh, we saw some play from Fabian opening up some of the meeting hall wall from the lobby side to put additional pressure on him, and he decided to bail out. And I think that was the right call, enemy just bailing out. This time, he's not even going to try. He's going to say, you know what? They're going to just spend utility on it, and that was the right call, because that's exactly what they're doing, is expending utility, trying to get that room. But instead, they're going to play two men in this tower. You're going to see both the Jaeger of enemy and Blast on the Legion. Kanto anticipating this. Unfortunately, the speaker in the way of him seeing the stairs. Blast, though, over peaks his angle, gives himself away just a little bit, takes a tiny bit of damage. But I don't know if Kanto knows there's two men in there. And if they can play this smart and long and delay this, it's going to make it hard for them to succeed in trying to push. Uh, downstairs without having to worry about a flank from behind. Have recovered their diffuser. In the meantime, Kanto Rocchetti just holding off. I, this is something that you mentioned before as well. It's just, hey, G2 will just come in and take map control, but weird to say that they're not able to follow it up with anything more, right? Yeah, map control is one thing, but if it's not map control that leads to an execute, it's, it's a problem. It, it, you need a certain amount to be able to do that. And, and getting early kills as well helps because map control somewhat is established by manpower advantage as well. We see them setting up for an execute here, but again, they have not cleared out meeting hall successfully in terms of holding it securely, but Fabian is going to try and do exactly that from the crack under the door. Setting up for this plant. That is going to bait out some of the smoke there. No plant just yet. This is why you play the pulse. Revan to just get information infinitely, and it'll be spawning all the players from G2 trying to come in. He's got one C4, so Boss should have another blast. Unfortunately, actually, I'm not sure why he was trying to fight that position. C4 is out, and it's going to be enough. Goga will go down. Damage done to Revan, but doesn't really matter here. 35 seconds on the clock. Actually, the fuser is going to get picked up very quickly by Kanta Ricchetti. Smoke thrown right into him. Should be enough to push him away and maybe even draw. Oh, man, how is he still alive? So much damage it takes. The problem is when you you jump off of that, you're in a slow animation. Oh, Revan, he still finds it. Kanta Ricchetti finished off. There's no Nitro Cell here for Sir Boss. They dive in from the hatch trying to save the day, but Hungry will find one on Jonas. Second one is taken out, and Revan with the 2k at the end of the round. Beautiful bit of play there, the 3k for Revan. Even if he is using extended barrel on the UMP, 
commendable play. You still forgive him? I still will forgive him. Four rounds in a row from Penta. Is, is I don't think this is the normal G2. So G2 was the new Penta, but now maybe Penta is the new G2. <gasps> not, not really, of course. This is just one match. But either sure. way, this is... Uh, I think that's how it works. Is you lose one works? game and you can never come back. Even though it's... A, actually, I, I'm, I'm surprised we still get the question, but I will elaborate. When people see, oh, hey, our favorite team lost this match their game in their play day for the region can they play to play again yes uh, literally every single team plays every single play day for the region 14 times seven times on one patch seven times on the other and in between Attackers there's an invitational or a major event that's that's it i don't i don't think we can like bring up paint right now for me to like draw everything on a board and safety first <laughs> the the art skills I don't know I haven't seen them maybe maybe uh, you're phenomenal Bob I'm great. I draw here. I draw a mean Ubisoft logo there you go you've chose the wrong career path could have been over there drawing Ubisoft logos how many <laughs> just randomly walks up yeah. to people's like hey would you like a Ubisoft logo drawn on one of your walls dear sir Ten or and or go. madam so finally we're gonna see one operator change come out but it's not necessarily Five the one I would have expected Kanto going on to the Ash. I don't think he was doing terrible on Twitch. I'm not sure if this is going to make a huge difference, but either way, Dorms again, if they can uh, continue to win this, it's not looking great for this particular style of play coming up from G2 today. Uh, I think the biggest problem for G2 is that their spearhead has been extremely blunt. They haven't really been able to push through and pile through Penta. They take. I can imagine that's the point of what they're trying to do with Kanto, then, right? Exactly. It makes a ton of sense. So we'll see if that works out. Um, it's always quote unquote interesting. Insert caster word in there. Um, in the meantime, you and us will take control of the hallway. He's got to be careful. Potential players that are inside of that uh, attic. In the meantime, the drone of his teammates will get will drone of his teammate will get shot down. There's nobody in there. But we saw how much G2 stalled when they went through tower the last time. This time they're going to completely change it and go for standard play. Goga in the closet, and he's going to come out of it. Uh, well, destroy it. Well, he's, he's making an entry out of it, so. There we go. Perfect. Exactly what you need to do, though, and that is uh, enemy, unfortunately, not able to stop that. Means they are set up for this, which is going to depend on Yunus, again, to smoke for a plant there, as is so important, so that Goga can get that plant down. But, of course, there's going to be smokes and C4s just waiting for him. Might even have a C4 on that bandit as well of the enemy, so that might mean at least those two C4s to throw out on top of the smokes. And then Goo Mines as well, not to be underestimated, but the attempts at the crossbow with that shot there being returned shots as well. And Goga also on very low health means a smoke could easily kill him mid plant. He's got to be careful, but look at that. Hungry and his teammate Blast are down on the floor. Blast will get eliminated by Kanto. Pango will find one, but Sir Boss from Small Tower will get one of his own. Fabian to shut down enemy before he can go for the C4 play. And now it's all up to Sir Boss. Exactly. He's going to be the boss of the moment as he finds one on Yunus. And you go for the retake. It's a difficult one as the diffuser is planted in the hallway. A very open position for him to deal with. And Pengu will make short work of the boss himself. He, as they say, gave him a deal he could not refuse. Yeah. In this he case, got shot uh, in the face. Yeah. He was like, here, I'll give you some of these bullets, and you go ahead and uh, eat them. But unfortunately, that was a difficult retake situation because coming up the white stairs like that, pretty predictable. Not a whole lot of ways you can play that if that cross is set up, other than hoping you can get the kill first. In that case, uh, not likely to happen. So a good execute. And they're actually, rather than playing Dorms again, which is fully their option, going to switch off to playing Tower. It's an interesting choice. Got to say, though, that uh, that did work out a bit better for Kanto, I suppose, that time in terms of bringing the uh, Ash. Now, Revan going to tease that they're playing Tower. He's going to bring out the Castle pick first and then sixth pick over the Valkyrie because the Valkyrie would have been a tip-off that they were going for that Tower. Defenders so a little bit of use of the sixth pick there to kind of fake them out. I mean, we've been seeing quite a bit of Valkyrie ban as well. Uh, mostly on maps like Constant, which is, you know, it's, it's normal. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, but on here, on Tower, now your your decision is, well, where do I really put my cameras? Do I yeah. put them mostly inside, or am I going to put them outside? Am I going to use them to support my teammates that are in and around the map, or should I just bring an Echo that can fill that role? It's a lot of flexibility, and really, uh, you have to be. You have to have a lot of practice to understand how your opponents really work. 
Now this is why Pengu is bringing the IQ. You can easily, you know, spot that camera, realize what it's supposed to be doing in that position, and go for a snipe on it. But it isn't a position where you're easily counterable from the staircase. And I do think Pengu consistently bringing the IQ is also why they stopped bringing the Echo. Because we still we will see uh, Echo a lot of times on, on many of these bomb sites. But in this case, they just decided to stop bringing it pretty quickly. And I got to imagine it was just due to it being spotted out so easily and taken care of by either uh, Pengu or calling it out for someone else to shoot it, possibly even the shock drones to do so. So as, uh, as unfortunately, the Yokai cannot do anything about this. But this aggressive play from Blast here oh. punished severely. Oh, it seems that's like a good start. That's all they needed. Just put Kanto in the ash. Yeah. Is it going to be joystick 2.0? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, this is the last attack round. So maybe a little bit late as uh, they've already foregone four points to get to this point. I mean, we'll say that just like with yesterday, Face Clan were losing to Red Devils on bank, and then they, they just came back and demolished Red Devils when they went to their attacking yeah. side, or their their defensive side. So there you go. Though, 4v3, still advantage for G2. Is Kanto Rocchetti looking to punish more? Or more of the players here yeah. of Penta Sports? Revan Hungry. One thing is, though, can they kill that Jaeger in T3? Or are they even just going to try and, and smoke? I mean, they can't smoke now is the problem because they lost Yunus early. This is this makes it much more difficult to get any kind of plant down without just killing as many people as possible inside the tower, mostly top down and maybe a little bit from the side. At least they've got control of dorms, which is going to be important trying to pressure out a enemy here. A but a minute 25 left, and uh, they have yet to find any more kills in here. However, the Mute being dead as well as the uh, Legion is good early on. Oh, Ravan missing the shots oh. and Kanto will punish him for it. In the meantime, Pengu has come in and how does he win it? Enemy will go down Hungry though. With a finisher of Kanto Raketti, Hungry with a shotgun shell. Still one more against the two alive here. He'll find one and drop him. The Fuser is still in the hands of Goga, but not for long. Hungry with a 4K to win it all out. Penta Sports put yet another one on the board. We talked about one of the best smokes in Europe, and there you go. You see him in action, ladies and gentlemen. Hungry, nom nom nomming on G2. That is a phenomenal start for them. And that was a defense that fell apart so fast towards the end there as people just start dying left and right. Pangu winning his fights. But the shotgun, guess what? That is all close range fights. You're going to have to deal with serious pressure there. And uh, he just had the right moves at the right time to just, just move out and spray, move out and spray. Yeah, uh, he didn't have the moves like Jaeger. No. But, but uh, it had him like smoke. Absolutely. Which is work. all that he needed. So we'll see now. Five to one. Penta two rounds away from victory on Oregon. Will G2 come back on the defense? Jonas playing the alibi. Usually we'll see Jonas playing a bandit, but this is laundry supply. So bandit is not the most important operator. Sometimes we'll see him set in meeting hall. It's a, it's a good position for him to be there, especially the fact that you have those batteries. In this case, you're just going to rely on the mute and go go on the X. And the important thing for uh, for G2 to worry about here is, while they're not on match point, they're on, I would call, tie point. If they cannot afford to lose a single round if they want the three points out of this, which they need to make up for their earlier loss. They need to not drop a single round. They need to go all the way six rounds in a row to close this out in their favor with the three points. That's going to be a tough task ahead of them. They are going to play it a little bit differently as uh, you're going to see them bringing out the dock and the alibi. They're also going to bring out that echo. And then a Thatcher actually coming out here for the attackers for the first time as G2 seemed to flat refuse to bring it, deciding instead the the IQ and the Twitch were more important. We'll see how Hungry can do on the cap tiles. Eunice had kind of mixed results on those plays. And uh, Eunice actually sixth picked into the alibi, so they may or may not know it exists still yet, as he was faking being the Pulse. Yeah, and Pulse obviously would make a lot of sense. Penta ran the same operator yeah. down in, in Laundry. So obviously you have the C4, you can combo it with other operators. But still, now, Fabian makes sense that he'd bring, bring the dog. I'd assume that he's bringing a bulletproof camera, which is something they really would require because Echo cannot see through smokes, and we've seen how prevalent Capitao is on this map, and indeed, Hungry is the uh, is the player bringing the operator. It's interesting, though, that it's not Kanto on the dock and then uh, maybe Fabian or, or someone else on the smoke, just because, well, Look, Kanto's been such a good, uh, he's such a phenomenal player with the ACOG. Yunus is, still has two Prismas in his back pocket. He's definitely saving I, those, so that way they cannot drone those out early. 
so he can kind of spring those up when they've already cleared an area or mm -hmm. feel like they have. Not to mention, you can potentially set them up at choke points, you know, so they their drone ends up going through one, and then you end up spotting the attacker. He is definitely trying to play a very sticky roam so that they cannot feel secure on this attack, but at least they have the Thatcher to be able to make short work of Pangu's jammers. Oh, the, the flash comes in, but Goga is able to find Blast and through the smoke. They can't really spot the alibi moving in. Well, Yunus is going to get shot down ASAP here by the squad. Now, what does Kanto do? What would Kanto do? I think that's something we have to, you know, start putting out there. Three versus... And it's just smoking. He's just, I'm going to smoke and then run. All right, Sir Boss will go in still on the Zofia. He's, he has to deal with opponents first, and this is not a great spot to be in if you're Penta Sports. G2 just have complete control. And look at that, the soft wall being used perfectly by Kanto as he just destroyed part of the wall. He can play Smoke, he can play Ash Twitch no matter what. He might just dive down to the site. No, Penta is just going to completely change their play style and go through the construction. At some point, this is going to be telegraphed, especially the stall out here with any with no aggression on Kanto. At some point, they're going to go, hey, they're going to call it. They're, they're going for another push, but I like the distraction. Hungry actually going for the smoke and the fire, completely telegraphing the wrong attack as Revan comes from behind. Oh, Hungry it. just eats the seat. Well, how is he still alive? Not for long, though. Sir Boss, though, coming in from behind. He still has lifelines in the back pocket to use if necessary. Pengu and Fabian, last two alive. He'll find one. That's Pengu out of play. Kanto spotted. The shotgun, though, will hit. Can he close this one out? 1v1, 50 seconds, and Kanto does it again. The shotgun to the face at that. True top shotgun plays of the year. We've seen so much of that. Hungry with a 4K, and now... Kanto. Two rounds in a row of smoke shotgun just destroying at the end. It is definitely a very good gun. It is a pump shotgun, so it's a bit slow. But it doesn't take very many hits at close range to just destroy attackers, especially le that late into the round when they've already sustained a bit of damage. Dining. An interesting choice. They were going to go dorms, so this, uh, this should be interesting to see. We saw one dining uh, defense earlier successful from Entz. Can they repeat that? Did they learn something from that? I don't know. But that was a, a heck of a defense. I really liked the attack strategy of Hungry, though, completely acting as if they were going to go for a plant from the lobby side while the attackers attacked from blue. It actually worked initially. Had uh, Kanto just not attack been on top of those shotgun plays, it actually would have worked. They would have successfully probably... I mean, I'm, I'm theorizing, of course, but Kanto there definitely just creeping the up. Just theorizing. A game theorizing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Revan doing fantastic, though, as well, trying to catch up with Kanto. This is still absolutely within Penta's uh, possibility here. And, uh, and this is risky, because like I said, they were on tie point, essentially. And going to Dainy is a big risky play, because if you lose it, now you cannot win. You can at best tie. And without having the Maestro, it's going to be very complicated. Sure, you bring Goga with um, you know, the, 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 the Yokai to play, but that's, that's pretty important, though. Obviously, Pengu playing the Rook here will only afford him a deployable shield and not what the Doc would have brought, which is the Bulletproof Camera. So it's not what the Doc would have <laughs> In this case, though, I still think you know his job is to just kind of try and secure it as best as possible. But if they can keep the, twi the, uh, the Yokai drone, both of them preferably, safe and sound and just delay for as long as possible so it comes down to the wire for the plant. Totally doable for Goga to just stop the plant single-handedly. Now there is an electrified wall and they did not bring a Thatcher this time. So they're dependent on potentially the shock drones to stop uh, the batteries from working and open that up. That is a big part of the delay. If they can successfully keep those batteries alive, and that, well, oh, there goes Junus or, or Unis already. So he's not going to be able to bandit trick those. He can't replace the batteries once they get taken out. Great start by Sir Boss. Now, all the lifelines have been expended here on Sir Boss's Zofia. So that's the trade. A lot of utility for the kill. Fabian, in the meantime, still in the castle, still in the tower, and can go for peaks. As, of course, you would expect uh, your opponents to be setting up somewhere around the kitchen area. But Hungry is ready. He's repelled for that exact point. He can deal with uh, Fabian if he'd like to peek. Now, the thing is, the Capitao is also running the holographic. Now, his point was to hit that window now, yeah. so they watch it for a while, then leave it alone, and he comes back when they're not paying attention. Indeed. Just put your opponents on their toes. Now, Revan, um, a great Twitch player, I have to say, but here running the holographic, so won't have the same range capabilities. He's going to try to, quote-unquote, thread the needle. Uh, 
yeah. put the bullets all the way to the end. Not going to find anything off of it. Now, because the Zofia does not have any impact anymore, then Pengu is going to be able to stay right behind that shield for a bit more. But no, Kanta Raketti finds it. Rivan will go down. But that's the Capital Bolt already in. Well, Goga is still in place here to be able to do something to stop it. Pengu down now means they're getting progress towards an actual plant. Hungry is still alive with the diffuser and the ability to smoke things out, but that's going to make it very clear that the plant is going down when that happens, so you might even need to use one just to bait things out first. Now, Kanto Rikedi will get spotted as Goga will maneuver his Yokai drone in a position where he can shut down his opponents. Now, there's one player down right behind the shield, but Kanto will have to do the work. Unfortunately, his Bullets not on point enough to finish off as Blast will actually move all the way back and outside of the site. No diffuser set yet. There's still a decent chunk of time for them to reset Blast as Penta realized they have the man advantage. Kanto Rikedi, though, squirming on the floor here. The flashbang will get chucked in the back. No ADS to protect, but Fabian, again, you mentioned it. He tapped before and now he's ready for the attack. Sir Boss will come in and watch from the white stairs. Enemy will find one as he goes instantly for the diffuser plant. And Goga ready to deny that plant remaining. as we speak. Yoga will go, well, Yokai will be fired in as Fabian will be able to net two kills. That's three for him now. Enemy in the 1v2. A lot of work to be done. And both players in the back. He'll follow up on the castle, but the 5-7 is not fast enough. He'll find one. He'll go for the diffuser plant. And Goga is right behind. He'll have to walk into it. He's not sure where his opponent is. Can he come in from the side and win this fight? Goga in the 1v1 and the knife from enemy will win it! Goga goes down and what is what going on? Play. What a play. Oh my god, beautiful bit of play and the suppressor on the 5-7 might have been just enough to confuse the Echo. The split second decision making to go into kitchen and decide to go for the plant there puts Penta firmly in that one point minimum advantage and now G2, all they're going to get is that tie, potentially, with four more rounds ahead of them. Before that, G2, 6-2, that's the reverse here. I got to imagine Shas at this point just in tears. Whatever hair he still has yeah. on his head. This is looking dire. This is looking dire. That was absolutely a round that G2 should have been winning because of the way they were playing it. They were playing a very aggressive uh, push up back against them up to the door using the deployable shield doing everything they could to stop that plant from happening and i don't think they Attack ever expected him to just run into the kitchen and plant and because of that goga being a slow th uh, one speed could not get there in time diffuser went down and just the play the knife to come around the corner like that that was i mean i imagine you heard him coming you sound like a truck coming when you're a, a, a three armor running around so Certainly predicted, but yeah, it was nice to see uh, Fabian's earlier play work out. Oh yeah, the uh, thing, but it was not enough to save that round. I, I think that that all came down to the decision of, hey, I'm just gonna go plant in kitchen. In that position, there is your chances of winning are so slim. Yeah. It's okay if you lose it. And that was a total Hail Mary play. Yeah. And he went and planted. He just he had Attackers just enough time, the thermite that is, yeah. to plant in a position where even if the, the Echo rotated in, wouldn't be been able to kill him. However, if Goga had come in from the main door into the kitchen yeah. instead of the one from dining... Just yeah, lack of information. Like you said, the, the lack of Maestro there because it's banned. They couldn't have those extra evil eyes to be able to look around even. Because you're, you're not expecting anybody to come into the kitchen and plan, right? Yeah. For, for good reason, usually. <laughs> but either way, we'll see how things go down this round as they are going to be playing uh, similar operators as they had played on Laundry to an extent. For their defense, Eunice is going to be trying that alibi again. Goga is going to be on the Echo. Kanto going to be on Bandit. Should be interesting to see how this goes down. Blast on this Ash. Going to try and at least get some control downstairs early on. You see enemy droning ahead for him. So they're doing a good job making sure they get that early control to try and push out the bottom floors. You see a couple of defenders doing a good job holding Kitchen, but guess what? They're caught out now. And that's Kanto spotted. But can they execute on that or just corral him at some point so they can start to attack dorms? Now Revan again on the Twitch this time. We'll play the ACOG instead of the hall that we saw at the past round. Fabian trying to contest his opponents on the opposite end here in the meeting hall, but he takes so much damage in that early incursion. Kanto Ricchetti on the bandit this time. And G2 are very well known for switching operators. And here, it'll be a similar thing as well. Pengu on the mute. 
This time bringing the bulletproof camera that has been oh so important for so many teams in Pro League in this season. Specifically, drones are going to get thrown in as Plas will get plastered from the back. Jonas takes him out with the Alibi. We got Blaster. Oh, right oh. the Prismas and then completely tapped by Kanto. And so that's, that's working. That's why you run the Prismas. They give you so much information. Hungry tapped as well. Fabian from below will find the angle on a repelling Hungry. And it's now Sir Boss and enemy. Last two alive versus the five of G2. And Pengu will dive and find the kill. Sir Boss is out. Now they'll try to rotate into the kitchen. At least enemy will find one, but still has four to go through. At least Pengu's low on health. Jonas is ready. He sprays in, but he actually misses quite a few of the shots. The enemy trying to put himself in a better position to pull out the goo mine. Shearing's opponents up and down, and from above that. Hole is going to be watched by Kanto as round number one and round number nine and taken by G2. Finally, they'll break that uh, drought and put something on the board. At this point, they're just fighting desperately to get that tie, and this is not going to be easy because they continue to sit on this match point. And as they win bomb sites, guess what? They're forced to rotate to other bomb sites. I think I feel like I said guess what too many times. But <laughs> guess what? Guess you what? You were saying it. I, I said it again. <laughs> Oops. Well, either way, though, it has definitely been the case uh, where just winning the defenses here is going to put them in a tough spot. Yeah, they won uh, or went to dining and got that out of the way to an extent, but not winning it means they might just have to go back to it because they won dorms and laundry. If they can win laundry again here, then they have to go back to dining and or kitchen. So Fabian gets to sneak in that dock again, so they're going with similar strat that they went with last time, which I'd say worked out fairly well. You saw Kanto, though, Defenders a big part of that clutch at the end. But uh, they were really able to kind of stall things out. Blast, though, interestingly enough, bringing a sledge this time. So this is definitely them trying to change things up. But they have that Thatcher, though, so they are well prepared to try and deal with Pangu's meat jammers. But they can also potentially use it to deal temporarily with Goga's uh, Yokai drone, if there happens to be one that he can potentially hit with a... Uh, EMP that will give them the opportunity to potentially plant. However, again, this is going to depend on Hungry. We're seeing a lot of matches so far today where uh, the capital is super important to getting the smoke down, and they're not necessarily having any kind of backup smoke, which is surprising considering how important smoke plants are at the moment to getting things down. And the fact that defenders often have things that can see through that smoke. We're seeing people playing with bulletproof cameras. Uh, I mean, obviously, Maestro Evil Eyes when those are available because of Maestro not being banned. So it's uh, it's tricky right now at the moment. So it's like you have Maestro banned, even more reason to be bringing more smokes. We'll see how they go, though. They are clearing out the west side first, making sure that that's good. Is uh, This is the ideal way to do it, but you kind of need to take that kitchen. And this is where they need to catch Eunice off guard, who's probably got some of those Prismas still in his pocket. They are hungry, continuing it. Not going to find anyone. Of course, the Mew Jammer is going to make his life a bit more difficult. And drone into the kitchen. He'll just move in himself. Figures that, oh. <laughs> if we knew. I know. He could have easily wall banged that had he known. But that's what the drone's for. That's what he's doing right now to find that information out. But too little, too late. And he'll walk out to the meeting hall. At least the Capitao is in a safe position there in the bathroom. So now we'll spot the alibi rotating in the garage. That is the information that Revon will require. As he finds him, there you go. Yunus cleared out, all thanks to some beautiful bit of drone work and information relay from Penta. G2, Pengu especially. Now, in the meantime, we'll set up his mute jammers on the sink, and we'll see how Penta deal with it, because obviously, they're bringing the Thatcher, which should be a pretty easy one, two, three, I cleaned it all up kind of deal. Yeah, I mean, it seems like they're actually kind of trying to mute trick it to an extent. It seems like he's he's uh, had a backup jammer to be able to hit uh, after the EMP went. Obviously, if he used mute jammers elsewhere, though, he may not have enough to deal with all the EMPs. But hey, maybe at least force Revit oh. to work for it. He just put it at that point. I'm not sure if Pengu has any anything more. He still has one. Okay. He was just putting one. He'll have to go for the last one. There's still an EMP available here. Kanto going for the shot in the back, but it'll get tagged. And there's one in the kitchen as well to force him away and back down into the tower. This Fabian, in the meantime, will rotate on the bottom side and will boost Kanto up back to... Well, as close to full HP as possible. Oh, there we go. But Pengu trying to fight up close with the shotgun. Does not work. Koga will be the one to finish off Revan, but the Thatcher had already done his work, and he's already gotten two kills off of it. 
Now all that's left is normally your three anchors. There's still 40 seconds on the clock. Kanto's already been using a decent chunk of his smoke canisters, which means the yokais of Goga are going to be Bomb really the it. most realistic um, last line of defense that G2 will have in this spot. And they might have even spotted it on the drone as well, since it was moving just in front of the drone that they went onto. But smokes are going to cover it, so it's going to come down to timing and accuracy on that. Blast couldn't even kill Encanto. Oh, he can't find the second one. Goga's low on health, but he can't see anything through the smoke. And that's, of course, the downside of not having the maestro. He'll still fire one right into the smoke just in case. He'll spot the plant of the Thermite right on the side. Two seconds left. This should be more than enough to go for the plant here. All the yokais have been used and the defense will take it as no time. The Echo sitting in the back and just relying on the dock, delaying G2. Even when being two men down, will be able to use their utility. Basically, two yokais, this basically two extra players on the squad and even more delay potential. They put the fourth round on the board and still two more to go before they get the tie and the maximum one point. This, and they're going to go back to dining and try that again. Hmm. Interesting choice. But to be fair, they had a decent dining defense. It's just uh, at the same time, they know that defense. Now they've read into it in terms of knowing what's going on. But again, they're not bringing the Thatcher unless they sixth pick to it. So that is going to potentially delay them for a while. Hopefully Eunice not going to get killed early this time. That was a big problem last time. They even get a sneak out of the duck, but Blast actually going to sneak to the IQ to at least spot some things, to have some idea. I mean, that, that's a good play because the, the Echo Drone has been costing them on multiple sites now. It, it almost cost them the dining attack last time. So having the ability to spot that Yokai Drone is going to make a big difference in their ability to do something about it potentially. Although I got to imagine uh, Revan's going to wish he could hack those Yokai Drones to be able to do something about it as well. But either way, at least uh, if he can get someone down, he can get some, you know, Intel from the cameras, I guess. The default ones. Not a ton. As there's uh, not going to be a Maestro or a Valkyrie, so. There is the uh, two three armor Rook Dock yeah, combo here left. to try and snipe things out. Goga, I, I got to imagine, though, if it came down to a plant kitchen again, it might be a little more prepared for that. Yeah. <laughs> this, he's definitely going to be uh, rotating from the lobby into Attackers kitchen first. Right? I like that he's stashing his drone in there as well because he can get a good eye or at least give eyes to his team on how they're playing in there to call that out and then the other one to, of course, try and stop the plant or even use that one to rotate around if need be. But it doesn't seem like they go with that whole soft wall defense that we saw from Entz. Now Blast just bring the IQ. He can find that yokai just if he scans a small tower and that's one yokai just taken out for free. But he's not even looking for it yet. Oh, if only he knew. Well, it can't combine with the Dokubi to go for the phone calls and then the spots as well. Very true. So, what would Revond? So, there's one player. You see him above the defense of G2, and um, I don't know if that's Goga or not. Should be Goga, right? Yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah, it is. So he's just playing in the white stairs. Very good position for, the, for him to be in. Yuna's spreading for the C4, but a bit too slow. We'll get shot down. Hungry will find the kill on Fabian. It's now they spray in the back. The bandit is somehow still alive here. Yonas, but Pengu will find the angle. Sitting right behind the bomb. Kanta Riketti with another one. Revon will get shot down. Now you lose the Dokubi as the call had come up. You're not going to be able to use that. And you lose the IQ, which means you're not going to be able to deal with those Echo Drones any longer. At least Penta still have enemy to use. And you see the Jaeger, Kanta Riketti going in for potential run out now there's no information for him to play off of and he's low on health so the instant hungry starts doing uh, work and damage it's yeah. going to be the moment for yeah, he's just he waiting for a call that he's at the door basically and i assume that g2 have that information through uh, a camera or even just shots firing in or something like that can really tell you where he's at very true here you go Canto, there you go that's the call but no He's going to run out for just a second. No, in the meantime, Hungry just switches back to his drone. And that'll be his downfall. Enemy will find one as the yokai in the back will do the work. The finisher that Jonas was looking for, Sir Boss, knows that there's the bandit there, but he has no utility to try and push it. And the echo is still upstairs. He'll have to pre-fire into the bandit, but Jonas is ready. And we'll finish the round. Wow, round number 11 will go to the way of G2, and it's looking like a tie here. It's starting to feel like the season of dining. You know, it's a possibility because we're starting to see it working more. And uh, teams more willing to try it. Definitely our red wedding in this case when it comes to dining. 
Five to six. Scoreline. Penta can still grab the three points and deny G2 any here at the end of the day as G2 right now are sitting with only three on the board. Penta's victory here would tie them up with G2 who, remind you, won game number one against Mocket and then lost the secret on Villa just last week. Yeah, definitely been a struggle for them, but at least they've won Oregon once already before, so they're not in the worst position. Blast actually going to sneak a Maverick in there, interestingly enough. Now, so far, they have only lost dining on defense. They have won laundry twice and dorms once, so they're not in a bad position to potentially close Defenders this out in that tie. As attackers. now there's a lot of pressure on Penta, because if they get the win, not only does that continue to shut down G2, which makes the top of the leaderboard more of a possibility, more of an opportunity to get to that LAN final, but it also means that they get the three points, which is, well, three times as many as you get from tying. And that is a really big uh, amount of pressure on Penta. And that's that's where a lot of teams choke. This could be uh, that, that pressure alone, as well as G2's ability to win a lot of these defenses could be exactly what makes it so that G2 is able to do that. All right. Will Penta secure it? Or will the the boys here from the Penta squad have a uh, rough night with their coach? I believe uh, Jessica is not known for her, how do you say, soft touch when it comes to coaching. Definitely. Oh, man. These guys are going to get... Uh, they're gonna get a but, bit of a smoke. But Shaz is known for his soft touch. Oh, He's no. gonna be so nice tonight. Oh no. Good job, <laughs> guys. You put in a good effort. I appreciate everything you did. If Shaz ever says that, that is not Thomas Lee that I know. Yeah, no. It's a pot person at that point. Alright, well Sir Boss will set up a claymore here just in case there's a run out, but we've seen Canto. We've seen that even the that that doorway has not really been used for a run out. It's just been used to have an angle to fight the players on the power. Great start. Jonas will win out the fight as Blast was trying to penetrate in from below. It's a smart thing to do, but unfortunately, the call comes in way too late. Maybe you should have used that before. Yeah, it was definitely the case where I don't think they expected him there. They're droning him now to make sure. But at the same time, he can always rotate up, which he is kind of just maintaining control of the tower, Bomb trying to side. But I think he, we could see him just rotate all the way around towards the lobby side instead, because Kanto has control of that at the moment to give him free reign to rotate back up armory stairs if needed even. And there's Ophi in the meantime, just opening up those windows. And oh, Revan just trying to find the angle on the Valkyrie in the back. Oh, no Valkyrie. I'm not sure what operator. Uh, I think it was Valkyrie. There you go. Kanut, is he going to get spotted? That's a, this is a great drone there, but actually spotting the alibi as well. The bandit has run away. Should be the, the smoke of Pengu there. Kanto, Rukete, and Yunus on a hunting mission now. Monster hunters Lonely themselves, dog. as uh, Sir Boss and Hungry. Activity just afraid wrong. of any plays from the attic. We'll see one side reinforced and the other one soft is from the tower. So they know which one to watch out for. Player right by that B site, and they cannot vault just because of players downstairs in the kitchen, which is why, hey, you're attacking the top floor. Maybe you should clear out the bottom Lonely one as left. well. And, you know, being that one player down, Penta cannot really afford it, especially the amount of time left. They might just have to dive into Nitro Cells galore. We are seeing that cyclical sort of meta happening where we're getting a lot of attacks on the kids' bedroom now. And there goes Goga, so at least that will help things, but this is getting slowed down with 35 seconds left. Let's see four available. You see it in the hands of the bandit. And I'll just be ripping it here to slow things down for the attack. More Gumans being set up by the Legion in the meantime is Fabian. Just looking for it. This is 18 seconds left. There's nobody's penetrated the site. No, Pengu is down on the floor. Hungry's come in. Revan will find the kill, will finish him off. Hungry's gonna go for the plant, but he's gotta be careful. The, the floor below him should be more than enough to clean it up. Jonas will find one. And Fabian with the second. Should be all here as four seconds left on the clock. Sir Boss will dive in. The diffuser's all the way in the back. Can he go for it? No! The hatch in the way in Revan. Finding the kill, not enough there. All timing, all well played. G2 will at least escape with a draw. A good comeback, 6-2 was in the advantage of Penta. Turns into a 6-6, and it seems like just putting Kanto Ricchetti on Ash was the start of hyping up the finished player and putting them, putting them back uh, in, in the hot seat. Though, unfortunately, this means that we'll have no interview for this matchup as there is no winner in it. And uh, otherwise, 